John was not a calm disciple of Jesus Christ the three years that he walked with the Lord. He showed a very shallow nature. He was not a man of depth. He was hardly a man qualified for the task of God's revelation to the whole world. Let's look at this writer of the fourth gospel more closely. He was a fisherman on the Sea of Galilee in business with his father, his brother James and Peter. When Jesus came to them all and called them to discipleship, Mark 1.20 says that without delay, uh, he called them and they followed. Something of John's impulsive nature was evident immediately. And that life-centered nature of John was evident to Jesus as well, and he called him and his brother James the Sons of Thunder, a violent picture. Thunder rolled across his life as he walked with Jesus for those three years. He was critical, judgmental, quick-tempered, and violent. Luke 9.54 tells us that he was prepared to destroy a Samaritan village because it did not welcome Jesus. He was explosive. Thunder. We see him reckless and spontaneous in Mark 10.39 when he told the Lord that he would go anywhere with him. See, depth was lacking. Just thunder noise. John was intolerant and narrow-minded. Mark 9.38 tells us that he once tried to turn Jesus away from being compassionate about a man possessed by demons. Thunder. Scheming and self-centered, Matthew 20.20 20 tells us he sought a special position in the plans of Jesus. His self-appointment had no place in God's plans, however, for his unfolding revelation. John was just a man of thunder. John ever became qualified to reveal this gospel. He had to be moved away from his small life ways. The same is true of us who, like John, struggle with our own life-centered ways, especially before we were changed by Jesus. God's kind of peace and calmness were lacking for us as it was for John. There was no depth of insight and understanding into God's ways for us. There was no qualification to talk about God's revelation in Christ. Maybe not thunder for us, but maybe just noise. John was an uneducated fisherman. He was a man immersed in the religious ways of his day, a man comfortable with his Jewish understanding of a distant, angry God. For him, all revelation was in the past. Great transformation of heart, mind, and soul were necessary to this future apostle. That transformation began with the Lord's call to discipleship. Yet, this calling to discipleship, those years with Jesus, the special events, the love he experienced, and even his last moments with Jesus at the crucifixion, did not result in the transformation needed. Through it all, John failed to recognize that transformation that could take him into the calm, deep waters of God's revelation. That transformation required him to come to terms with the difference between God's life and human life, and also the relationship of God's life and human life, between bios and zoe, as we have said before, between what we call big life and small life, the divine and the human. But like us, with our assumptions and language limitations, John completely missed the meaning of these differences and God's intended relationship for his life and human life in and through Jesus. John's stubborn tendency of dependency on his previous religious ideas continued for the three years in which he was with Jesus, right up to the crucifixion. He heard reference to life, but he did not hear what Jesus really said. He saw what Jesus did, but he could not relate that to who Jesus really was. We are so much like John maybe even a follower of Jesus, but missing the Lord's most important message and ministry, we too need further transformation.